Hello. Oh my gosh. What a beautiful, gorgeous day. It is summer solstice and I'm coming your way from my garden. It is so lush. And when you hear who my guest is today, it's going to make so much sense. So much sense. And um, Katie, I'm going to bring you on in just a second. Um, please request to join, but first, a little song. It is the solstice and my heart is free, just like the sun shining on my face. I'm so excited to be in this place with my beautiful flowers, with nature and all surrounding me in the garden of love. In the garden of love This is how we know that life is good Because it's growing, growing, growing The sun is shining, shining, shining My heart is overflowing with love For you and for all that we see Welcome! Hi Cheryl! Good to see you! Hey everybody, happy solstice. I'm so excited to be here today and I am in my garden because my guest today is Katie. I'm gonna bring her on right now. She's an amazing educator and gardener, also known as the garden girl. How we can use our garden in making kombucha and the different types of plants and herbs and things that we can use for that. So Katie, welcome. Hi, Anna. I'm so excited to be here. You got a beautiful yeah, I'm so garden behind you. Yes, and I'm going to be doing a little show and tell, and I hope maybe you will be able to do that in a little bit too. I don't know how mobile you are with your phone, but maybe we can get a chance to see your beautiful garden as well. We can try and walk out there. Just I want to start in here with the Wi-Fi connection, make sure you can reach it, but we can head out there. I totally hear you on that, and I do not know how my Wi-Fi connection will do either, so it'll be fun for us to figure it out, but um, first, thanks so much for being here today. I so appreciate you. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to talk about kombucha gardening. Yes, well, tell us a little bit about you and what you do and um, how you became the garden girl. So I am a garden designer and health coach, and... I've been a gardener for about 12 years and kind of experienced a health crisis, which really fueled me to go back to my garden. That was the one thing I could control in my journey was my food. And so I really took that time to dig deeper into how I was growing quality food, how these foods would help me heal. And now I help others design gardens that will elevate their lives, meet their health goals. And make sure that they are gardening for what their family's needs are. Really being intentional about, about, about what we're planting, how we want to preserve it for later, to make sure that garden gives year-round, depending on your climate. Um, so that's some of the things. It's a really a garden-to-table experience is what, what is what I'm working with. I love that. I can also hear the garbage truck is heading my way, so I'm going to head to the backyard to try to keep that sound to a minimum. Um, but that is really wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that you help people figure out what their family needs so that they can not just, you know, randomly select plants, but grow things that actually are going to nourish them and sustain them. So when thinking about a garden, there's a couple of things that people need to keep in mind, right? So it's, um, you know, like you're in the Midwest, I'm in California. Am I able to grow all the same things? Or, or So where does someone start when they want to think about designing a garden? So one of the things where you should start is, is kind of learning your zone and learning your season. So you want to make sure that certain plants grow better during different seasons. So taking the time to figure out when you're, you know, we have cold, cool, warm, and hot. And so you kind of want to identify those months that fit in, and then we kind of work towards what plants grow best. And so we have this rotation and this succession of growing. So we get to enjoy some of the cool season and the lettuces and the greens. And then in the summer, we get those fresh tomatoes and peppers and fruits. So that's one of the biggest things is to learn your seasons first so you understand what you're planting and when you should be planting it to make sure that you're getting the best harvest. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I, you know, I've tried to grow lettuces. And then when you grow a couple and you realize, wow, I'm going to eat all of this in one salad, <laughs> you quickly, it quickly dawns, uh, it quickly dawned on me that, oh boy, I probably should have planted a few more of these if I wanted to have a consistent salad throughout the season. So uh, absolutely knowing your zone, I think is number one. And then figuring out how the yield is going to go is probably uh, something else that needs to be considered as well. Yeah, so when you're like, let's talk about having a salad garden. A lot of greens are anywhere between 30 and 60 days. So you want to be thoughtful when you're planting your spinach and arugula. Those are typically the quickest to do maybe one row each week. So you have that continual harvest and you're looking at your lettuces and just being thoughtful about how, how frequently you're planting. I like to go out every week or 10 days and look for a spot. What can I put in that spot? And let's keep it, let's keep it going. So to make sure we don't have those one and done disappointments. <laughs> yes, I learned that <laughs> very early on. Um, and, uh, but I, I think what's really lovely is you don't even necessarily have to have a yard to have a garden. That is true. There's tons of ways that you can grow without a yard, whether you have a balcony, a patio, you know, microgreens you can grow inside year round. So you have a little bit of that fresh green and and we forget too that we can use some herbs as microgreens. So whether you're cilantro microgreens or basil microgreens, you still can get some of those flavors without having to have a huge backyard. And so really being thoughtful about your lettuce bowls, maybe on your patio table, is a great way to integrate all of your little growing in your limited space. And I love herbs. They are so good in kombucha. That's one of my, the first ways that I started coming up with flavors for my booch is I literally just looked in my yard and I happened to be growing some thyme. I had a Meyer lemon tree because I'm here in Southern California where we have a lot of citrus and really just started with a little rosemary clippings and um, infusing those into my kombucha was so fun. And then the farmer's market heading over there and finding what's in season. Uh, and that's a really great place to start. So if you're new to kombucha and you're wanting to figure out what flavor should I try? What flavor should I do? Just walk out Side. There's usually so many things growing around you that you're going to be able to find something to quickly infuse in there. And a little bit goes a long way. I think um, sometimes we make the mistake that more is better with kombucha, less is more. Uh, so this is one of the ways we can do that. Um, so if I'm new to gardening, how do I, you know, how do I decide what what types of um, herbs or plants are going to be something I want to grow? Um, you know, is it just what I've been purchasing at the store? How do you help guide people through that process? So that's a great question. Yes. Yeah. So I think you should do a little bit of an inventory. What is that that you're frequently purchasing at the store that you can supplement in your own yard? And then I like to tell people to go through their top 10 recipes, even the ones from summer, winter, and look at those recipes and determine what ingredients are you using frequently that you can grow and that you can maybe dry or freeze for later? So really looking at your menu palette and then what your goals are. I always try to tell somebody, add one thing new every year. Try one new thing every year for your experience, for taste, um, and to kind of work on broadening that palette. So we start, we start there. That sounds really great. So what, what's, uh, and then we have to think about the season, right? So obviously we've talked about know your zone and it's so easy to get that information. Is it on your website or do you recommend people just go online and find it? You can, you can go online and Google, you know, the USDA zones. You can locate where you're at. Yeah. And that's going to be your great starting point is knowing your zone. And then you'll eventually learn your little microclimate that you're living in and what, you know, what grows well with kind of in a smaller, on a micro scale. And that's all part of gardening and learning, but it's a really fun process. Well, I'm probably just even peeking in your neighbor's yards and uh, with permission, of course, <laughs> but seeing what your neighbors have growing or what, what they might have in the front yard or something like this may be a good place to start as well in terms of figuring out what's going to grow in your climate. That in the farmer's market, like you mentioned, I mean, local people are growing and bringing fresh stuff. So taking even a year if you're planning for next year to watch the market and what, what they're bringing each week and how they're transitioning different fruits and veggies is going to give you a really good indication of what's going to do well in your area. And then um, 
which is which is great. I think the researching and the planning of the garden is is half the fun. And I know there's a lot of tools and planners and things out there. Are there I presume there are some specific resources people can find on your website. Why don't you just toss that out there and let people know how they can find you uh, in case they're they're wanting to go search that out as soon as possible. Yep. So you can reach me on my website, which is katieoglesby.com, and I have a bi monthly newsletter that comes out that will have tips. There's a free herb guide when you sign up to get on my email list. And it's a great starting point. And you'll just kind of go on the gardening journey with me every month. So you can kind of learn as we go. And it's a great starting point. And there's also a lot of blog posts on there that you can start kind of dipping your feet in and learning um, specific plants and growing ideas. What are some of the things we need to consider for our soil so that we have a good, healthy start to our garden? So that's a great question, because typically when we see some garden fails, that's the first place thing we look at is the soil, right? Healthy soil, healthy plants equals healthier you. So one of the things that I do recommend is locally doing some research on where you can get some quality organic compost and trying to find that as local as possible. Um, I grow in a locally made compost that's local to Wisconsin. Um, you can add some topsoil and things like that, but really making sure you have a nutrient-dense uh, garden base. And as you go through the season, we have to continually nourish those plants. So whether you're using an organic fertilizer or you're using more compost to top dress around those plants, every time we replant, we should be adding more nutrients to the soil to make sure that plant has the best start. As you know, we can start off the best we can. So. That is a great question. Finding the highest quality. It's one place I tell people, please don't skim. Like, it's really important to start out. Nobody wants to be digging out beds or have a failure. So that is, cut corners on, is really getting a quality soil. And I'll share some tips on how we can use kombucha in the garden a little bit later in our chat. Um, so for those of you who are watching and maybe you want to catch the full-length version of this, we have a new digital media subscription that you can get for $9.99 a month. You'll get access to the full-length versions of these interviews and more. We've got exclusive video content and articles for you, so don't forget to check that out.